It is 06.30 on a Friday morning. I am so excited today, I can barely contain it. But I get to do something I've never done before, get to have a great experience, and I'm gonna take you along. So, we better get going, it's a long drive. Dig drive, DIY! So I am here at Camp Atterbury in central Indiana. I was invited to participate in a mini day in the life of a soldier event where we get to do a few really awesome things. There's like a urban demolition demonstration. I'm not quite sure what that is. There's a rappelling thing, which I understand what that is. And I don't know if I'm in shape enough for something like that. And there's also, well, there's a ride. And the ride is what I'm really excited about. So hopefully the weather holds out and I get to do all that. I'm just gonna go in and see what there is to find out and then we'll go from there. <laughs> so they push back the start time of our event about a half hour because of the weather. We're hoping that it clears up and we get to do all the activities, but I'm just kind of overwhelmed being here. There's not a lot of military history in my family. I got a couple of cousins that were in the military, but I have utmost respect for it. So this is, this is quite an honor to be able to do this and to be even invited. They have a little museum here. It's kind of cool. We're waiting to start, so I'm just kind of browsing around. All right, so I am here with Dustin, and he is the one that's responsible for getting me here today. So thank you very much for that. Absolutely, I appreciate sir. it. The best is yet to come still, I hope. So up in Fort Wayne, we have an Air National Guard at the Fort Wayne International Airport, and I have a few family members that are there, but explain what's the difference between the Air National Guard and the Army National Guard? The Army National Guard is trained, they fall under the umbrella of what you know as the Army. The Army. So okay. the Army, Army National Guard, and then the Army Reserves, and then the Air National Guard falls under the Air Force. Sure. They're trained, they go through their training. Um, this, that, and the other. But what's unique is we have the same boss. So oh. the adjutant general of Indiana, we call him the TAG, he's actually in charge of the Air Guard and the Army Guard. Okay. So we're, looking, we're kind of sworn enemies, but we're the same <laughs> boss. So, uh, well, you know. Well, it makes sense when you explain it like that. It's so obvious. Air National Guard, Army National Guard. But right. to most of us civilians that aren't, you know, immersed in it and, and understand the rankings and the different divisions. Right. Yes, sir. It's we just don't put enough effort into learning about it. For so, sure, absolutely. So this is great for me, and hopefully some others that are in the same boat as me that just, just we take know. it for granted. Earplugs, gloves, safety glasses, sweatshirt, cooler. Hopefully the weather didn't ruin all the stuff today. Thank you very much for your time. Obviously it's. Uh, it takes a lot of uh, coordination to get to this point. We get to see what happens in the Army. It's react to a contact or, you know, react to weather at this point. So, out of uh, safety considerations, we did, uh, we're going to have to pull back on the repel tower. But we're still on track for the uh, actual aviation flights to Blackhawk and then the actual demolition range. So, I think my name is uh, Major Devin Seguin. I, uh, Army brat, was born in Germany, so grew up around the Army. I'm Neil Kof. I'm from up by Fort Wayne, Indiana, and I'm an agronomist working with farmers, and I'm also a YouTuber, so I make YouTube videos. I watch a lot of YouTube, so I have to find your channel. Yeah, YouTube. check it out. I'm heavy into cars. Like, that's my thing. I like to watch cars go fast. I'm but, pretty simple. <laughs> you're probably going to be in one now. So. All right. <laughs> All of the other folks there were educators invited to participate so that they could better understand what a day in the life of a soldier might look like and then go back to their schools and community to share what they'd learned. We had a great discussion about the challenges that face our students and young adults these days, such as trying to achieve financial stability, deciding whether or not they should go to college, and becoming resourceful so that they may develop the life skills that will empower them to be successful adults. If I had to choose two things, number one would be resourcefulness. I learned a lot about the different opportunities available from the guard, and then we ate lunch. So what do you think? Should this be the next Dig Drive DIY camera? This is awesome. Oh, the gimbal? Wow. Look at that. It's going to take a lot of firewood videos to justify one of these, but man, you get this... Uh, the smooth action, yep. but yes, briefly, I uh, just kind of tell folks what we're what we're doing here today. What's the purpose of this? 
Well, so we're trying to educate uh, influencers, uh, educators, administrators throughout the state of Indiana on what the National Guard does. And uh, being a subscriber and a fan of Dig Dot Drive DIY, I was like, there's no better person, uh, you know, a Hoosier yourself up from Fort Wayne coming down. I thought this would be a great opportunity to show you not only the benefits and, um, you know, what the National Guard provides, but give you a taste of what we do on a day to day by getting you in a helicopter, oh. watching some explosion, uh, explosions, and then uh, unfortunately we can't send you off a rappel tower today. Yeah. But, um, the rain got us today yep. on the rappel tower, but Absolutely. you so, still said the one thing that's really piqued my interest so far. So was that flying? The helicopter, yeah. Yes, sir. So, I, I've never been in a helicopter. and Breaking down into groups, hopefully get about 30 minutes fly, flying for you there. Nothing else gets canceled today, we get you up there. <laughs> and what I think is going to be unique is, you know, you do a lot of drone shots, but now you're going to be yeah, the drone. Yeah, I'm going to be in you're the drone. You're going to see the perspective from there, so that's going to be pretty cool. All right, well, let's do it. <laughs> All right, yes, sir. So now we're going to urban demolition. I don't know necessarily what that means, but I know there's explosives involved. So are these guys are doing training stuff here? Yep. Or are they mm -hmm. separate of what we're doing? So yeah, they're they're doing this on their own and then we're just kind of piggybacking off of it and oh, so this demonstrations. Was, yep. We're we're watching their thing. Yep. I so. see. It's normally a um, E6 to E seven NCO. Um, they're in charge of making sure the range runs and it's operated effectively and safely for everybody. So if at any time they say, hey, stop, like everything stops. So on the back side, there's a bunch of freestanding frames for doors, and they'll either attach them to the boards or they'll just lean them up against it, depending on what they have. We've used plywood, steel doors, wood doors. What else is going on here? So we're Hold coming on. out here, range 5.8, to uh, learn different types of charges. So, and breaches. This is primarily focused on explosives. So we're going through the C charges, all the different types of variants, as well as going through mechanical and manual. What do you do otherwise in addition to? I'm a fire team leader. I'm responsible for three other guys. Really? In the squad, yep. So there's two, two teams in a squad. That makes a squad. Gotcha. Yeah. So what do you do in civilian life? Civilian side, I work at a warehouse. I'm, at a I'm warehouse? A forklift driver, yep. Okay. Yep. Forklift certified. Well, that's, <laughs> that's terrific. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing yeah, it with no me. Problem. Appreciate it. For Look forward me. to uh, the demonstration. Oh, yeah. It's going to be good time. So uh, I'm Lieutenant Ingram. I'm the OIC for this uh, demo range, and this is my platoon sergeant for Marco. He's our RSO, and we're going to give you guys your safety brief. Once you pass this travel pit here, you should be in full PPE. You can, you can take it off, it's up to your leadership when you're, when you're over here building the charges, but once you cross that, that's it, full game. So just take all directions for myself, for him. Uh, we're going to walk you through it. We're going to walk you up here. We'll count you guys off as you go up there. We'll go up there. And unfortunately, we're going to pull the pin, but you guys can still see it go boom and everything. But safety-wise, we just got to control that. Can I ask, what, what's the nature of this then? This would be a, like the, the our brief said, an urban demolition. So what, what, would, the, what would this be for? Like yeah. to... So the purpose of urban demolition is so that, so those guys are the infantry guys, yep. and we are the combat engineer. So our purpose is to breach that obstacle, whether it be a door or any obstacle, whether it's costine wire or any obstacle, we take these chargers and get easy access. They're building the chargers right over here. Get in the end. You tape yeah, them up uh, so water doesn't get in yeah, or something. So if you take a look right here, this is debt. You, you call it detonation cord. Yeah, detonation cord. Just that cord for short. If you take a look, the ends actually are open. When you oh cut wow! Them, and you can like just a little, see all that dust falling out. Yeah. That's the explosive. So to make sure that, that doesn't get wet and mess up the oh. explosive on the inside. So just get a whole roll of uh, explosive wire, and so. Pardon my ignorance on all this stuff, but is it just a spark that ignites it all, or what, what specifically ignites it? Uh, we have different initiators, different kinds of things. We have time fuse, where we just light it, at, light it there and they just run, run away. away. Or we have different initiators, like blasting pads. This is what he's talking about. This is an initiator. This is an M14 time fuse. Essentially, we'll plug this end into something we call an igniter, which is just a little tube that sparks it off. And this is just to do a slow burn eventually till it reaches this blasting cap and that blasting cap is usually tied into the tail or something right here ah. it depends on the different type of charge so you would just literally duct tape that to the door yes sir great well thanks for filling me in i appreciate yeah, no it we're basically creating a c charge it's a 
one of the three charges that we're doing right now. It's for uh, Urban Demo, and we use C charges for their uh, basically their compact capabilities. Mm -hmm. So these guys are all here on tell on me their drill weekend. Their drill weekend. Yep. So you think of the National Guard, you think of part-time service. So they'll do one week in the month, and then two weeks in the summer, and then the the two weeks would look something like this. And they would get with other units and like collaborate kind of mm -hmm. like we have today we have the engineers and the infantry working together they do that like over a two-week period like a, a full-blown exercise so we have a guardsman that soil samples for us oh, okay so he he works a few weeks or a few days every week or every other week or whatever it is and yeah and he does you know his weekend and his yeah. two weeks in the summers whether you're testing soil or a police officer you know librarian they could be here yep. doing this kind of stuff i'm learning a lot <laughs> i should know more i feel like every civilian should know this stuff but they just don't you're kind of not living it it's kind of hard to understand you don't know unless you're right. either have to take a specific interest in it mm -hmm. or you have to be brought up through it right for sure. and so so we're learning and that's why i'm hoping that someone here finds this informational or educational i, I strive to have provide infotainment there we go perfect so, checking out a medic v here so this is our uh, equivalent to an ambulance. The oh, guys, that, the medics over yeah. there in the... Yep, so uh, when they go to medic school and they come back, uh, they do all the same certification tests and stuff and get completely certified as an EMT. So when they come back to Indiana, they could become EMTs for really? whichever company. Really? Just right on? Yep. Awesome. Well, we need more of those for sure. This way. Sorry, first time. <laughs> it's a size now. What are you checking? Ear pro, eye pro, helmet, and flick. Perfect. You are good. We're all set. All set. All right. Go well, enjoy thank you, it. sir. Have fun. I don't know what we're doing. So we're going to watch him put a charge on that door over there and then blow it up. So like I was saying before to you, um, they're just inspecting it. So now they're going to probably just do that end right there. So the back end of that charge is just lined with the uh, sticky side of the tape. And then he's just getting a nice firm contact on there, securing it in. Whoa! That was way more than I thought it was going to be. I really appreciate it. Huh? Did I make you jump a little bit? Yeah, it was, it was more than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> yeah, my ears are still ringing a little bit from uh, doing that a little too often. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> so that's what you'll be getting on. Right there. The guys are inside. So if you guys that's our out. Uber? Yep, that's your Uber. <laughs> I'm starting to get excited now. I've never done anything like this. I've never ridden in a helicopter, not even a, you know, I can't talk. Look at this thing. Holy cow. So this is why I'm here, to ride in that thing, a Black Hawk. It's going to be a good experience, I think. And everybody's just watching me be a YouTuber. Flying doors closed uh, just because it's a little chilly, and uh, we'll try to get the heat on for you guys. Uh, it's not the best heater in the world, so good thing you brought Jack. You got another YouTuber in our presence here. <laughs> yeah, maybe YouTube YouTuber. 100 subscribers. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll get you a couple more. What's it, what, what channel should they subscribe to? It's uh, Indiana Army National Guard. Indiana Army National Guard. All right, well. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Well, I think that deserves a sub or two. So it's finally our turn. We got a hot load, which means we're going to get into the helicopter while the rotors are spinning. Oh, 
The first Black Hawk helicopter prototypes to fly were in 1964, and then production started in the early 70s, and now they've been operational for the Army since 1978. The original Black Hawks were designed to replace the UH-1 Iroquois, which is most commonly known as the Huey. And now today, the most common variant of the Black Hawk is the UH-60. Now there are over 4,000 variants in operation worldwide, with the U.S. Army being the largest operator, having 2,135 UH-60 designated aircraft. And UH-60 Blackhawks are fitted with two General Electric turboshaft engines, each having over 1,500 horsepower. On average, a UH-60 Blackhawk will burn about three to 400 gallons of fuel per hour of flight. The primary mission of the Blackhawk is as a troop carrier and logistical support aircraft. But in addition, the helicopter can be configured to carry out medical evacuations, command and control, search and rescue, armed escort, electronic warfare, and executive transport missions. The helicopter has the ability to absorb high impact velocities. The fuel system is crash resistant and self-sealing, and the crew seats and the landing gear are energy absorbent. But what I particularly liked about riding in the Black Hawk was the view. Even though I've ridden in plenty of commercial jets and had a ride or two in a small Cessna, nothing before this has given me the true sensation of flying like looking out those large windows at low altitudes. For the first part of the flight, the pilot maneuvered just above the treetops and followed the terrain of the ground as it rose and dropped below us. It was smooth and steady, and not once did I feel nervous or worried. I did feel like a little kid, though, because even though I had imagined what it would be like, I really had no idea what I was missing until I experienced it for real. I had a once-in-a-lifetime experience that I likely won't get to do again. But to some of these servicemen, this was just another Friday afternoon. Before boarding, I asked one of the soldiers if he ever got tired of getting to ride in these things. And his reply was actually a bit surprising. He said that during one of his tours overseas, he had ridden in the Blackhawks so often that it had become mundane. Like a city bus ride to work almost. I mean, imagine that. And that's when I got a new perspective, an appreciation really, for those that choose to make this their path in life. From my civilian perspective, I'm grateful that my ride was recreational. And I'm humbled by the fact that there are folks out there willing to make this their job, whether it be part-time or full-time. We take it for granted, I think. So for that, I say thank you to all our servicemen and women for making those sacrifices. I really appreciate it. But you do have some really cool stuff to play with at work. So that concludes our helicopter ride in a Blackhawk. Dustin, this has been one of the more exciting Fridays Absolutely I've had sir. recently. Thank you so much for the experience and, and for getting to do that. I, it's not every week I get to ride in a Blackhawk helicopter, yeah. so that was nice. awesome. But you know what, if, there's, if, if people want to learn more, or if they're interested in the Guard, what should they, where should they check out? Absolutely, yeah. So check out uh, nationalguard.com forward slash Indiana, or you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, uh, just Indiana Army National Guard. All the socials. Yep, we're there. All right, well, it shouldn't be too hard to find them, but I want to thank you so much for finding this video, clicking on it. I hope that you liked it, and if I'm lucky, I'll see you in the next one.